Welcome to the world's first multilingual youth talk show, Hey the World. And this is season three. In this season, we brought together the young pioneers in the implementation of the Global Development Initiative, the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and gathered together the youth leaders from the first batch of 100 excellent actions of the Action Plan for Global Youth Development to focus on global development issues and contribute youth innovative solutions. And now, let us feel the wisdom and power of the global youth in building a community with a shared future for mankind. With the continuous rise of global temperatures, climate issues are posing increasingly serious threats to human societies and natural ecosystems. Data from the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity shows that youth in more than 100 countries are engaged in activities to protect ecosystems and biodiversity, working to build a green and sustainable future. Today, we have invited Arandra Frastero from Mexico, who was selected for the Global Youth Development Action Plan. She received the Land Heroes Award from the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification in 2020. Let's follow in the footsteps of Arandra Frostero and listen to her action plan. Distinguidos invitados, soy Alondra Fraustro de México. Es un honor estar aquí para compartir mi historia con ustedes. Vivimos en una época de retos medioambientales sin precedentes. El dramático aumento de la actividad humana está teniendo un profundo impacto en los ecosistemas del planeta. La creciente importancia de la contaminación del aire, el agua y el suelo, así como el cambio climático, han atraído la atención mundial. Según un informe de las Naciones Unidas, unos 7 millones de personas mueren cada año por enfermedades relacionadas a la contaminación atmosférica. Estos problemas medioambientales no solo amenazan la salud del entorno y de los seres vivos, sino que también tienen un profundo impacto negativo en la economía mundial y el desarrollo social. En este contexto, la protección del medio ambiente se ha convertido en nuestra responsabilidad y misión comunes. Como generación joven, estamos obligados a contribuir a la causa de la protección del medio ambiente. Por ello, he propuesto el Proyecto Juvenil de Protección Medioambiental Ciencia Mágica en México, con la esperanza de inspirar el entusiasmo y la acción de la gente para la protección del medio ambiente a través de actividades de promoción de la ciencia. Este programa está estrechamente vinculado a los Objetivos del Desarrollo Sostenible, ODS, de las Naciones Unidas, de consumo y producción responsables. Nos comprometemos a reducir los residuos, reciclar los recursos, crear productos respetuosos con el medio ambiente y aumentar la concientización para alcanzar el objetivo del desarrollo sostenible. Adoptaremos métodos científicos y medios innovadores para promover el desarrollo de la protección del medio ambiente y realizaremos nuestros propios esfuerzos para proteger nuestro planeta común. Mi pasión por la ciencia y mi deseo de compartirla con el mundo, son las principales fuerzas impulsoras detrás de este proyecto. Desde pequeña me encantaba la ciencia, sobre todo lo relacionado a la química y biología o ciencias naturales. Recuerdo que de pequeña hacía experimentos sencillos con materiales que había por casa, como hacer una erupción volcánica con vinagre o bicarbonato, utilizar zumo de remolacha como indicador natural. Crecí con la meta de convertirme en científica y cambiar el mundo a través de mis experimentos. Pero sobre todo, me di cuenta que no importa de nada saber o aprender ciencia si no la compartimos. Mi inspiración de todos los días es compartir la ciencia que hay dentro de los laboratorios en la sociedad para que se interesen en áreas de ciencia, tecnologías, ingenierías y matemáticas. Algo que caracteriza a ciencia mágica es su innovación biotecnológica, ya que he desarrollado un kit para enseñarles a las personas a cultivar sus propios alimentos. Este kit incluye todos los materiales para acercarse a la naturaleza y tener su huerto en casa. Además, en mi misión de combatir la contaminación plástica y en la búsqueda de aprovechar residuos orgánicos generados en mi ciudad, desde cáscaras de aguacate y plátano rescatados en negocios de comida, desarrollé biomateriales 100% degradables para sustituir los plásticos derivados del petróleo, 
desde macetas y papel y por último incluye materiales para crear un biofiltro de tratamiento de agua sucia y un libro para cuidar el planeta en familia, donde vienen todos los instructivos necesarios para realizar experimentos como crear una composta, aprender a reciclar, entre otros. Cada paso del camino me ha puesto un reto, pero también ha habido momentos de éxito y satisfacción. Estos momentos reflejan no solo los altibajos de mi viaje, sino también cómo han dado forma a mi visión y enriquecido mi vida. Como muchos empresarios, me enfrenté a grandes retos al principio de mi negocio. Varias personas me dijeron que no podía hacerlo y que no debía crear este proyecto, pero me negué a rendirme. Si hubiera escuchado esas opiniones, hoy no estaré aquí. Lo que quiero decirte es no te rindas. Si tienes un sueño o pasión, persíguelo con determinación, sin importar las dificultades que encuentres. Tuve el honor de recibir el premio Héroe de la Tierra por la Organización de las Naciones Unidas para combatir la desertificación y la sequía en Corea del Sur en el 2020. Es un premio muy prestigioso que reconoce mi innovación y mi contribución al desarrollo de productos respetuosos con el medio ambiente utilizando la biotecnología. Este premio me ha dado mucho ánimo y reconocimiento y ha traído más atención y apoyo a mi proyecto. Hasta la fecha, este proyecto ha impactado a miles de personas en todo el mundo. Desde el 2019, Ciencia Mágica ha organizado 700 conferencias, cursos y talleres, llegando a más de 150 mil personas. He colaborado con 300 diferentes emprendedores para compartir mi experiencia con jóvenes en México, inspirándolos a aprender más sobre ciencia y contribuir a la acción climática. He colaborado en 100 entrevistas diferentes en ciudades de México y en la plataforma global TEDx para compartir mi trayectoria como líder ambiental y mujer STEAM. Cada día siento una sensación de logro cuando veo cómo estamos inspirando a más personas a apreciar la ciencia y el medio ambiente. Y Ciencia Mágica es el vehículo a través del cual espero seguir creando un mundo mejor. Hoy no solo tengo un conocimiento más profundo de China, sino que también he escuchado más voces de todo el mundo. Al mismo tiempo, he tenido la oportunidad de establecer contactos y colaborar con otros jóvenes líderes en el tema de los Objetivos del Desarrollo Sostenible. Nuestra atención al impacto social no se detendrá aquí. En el futuro, prometemos seguir trabajando para contribuir al bienestar de la sociedad. Creemos que con dedicación y cooperación podemos hacer realidad nuestros objetivos. La idea de Ciencia Mágica no se limita a este proyecto, sino que puede extenderse a todos los rincones del planeta. En la vida cotidiana, cada uno puede ser científico, desempeñando un papel en la protección del entorno natural. Por lo tanto, animo a todos a seguir sus sueños, afrontar los retos con valentía y encontrar la motivación para cambiar el mundo. No subestimemos nunca el poder de la ciencia y la magia que reside en cada uno de nosotros. Pasemos a la acción y construyamos juntos un futuro sostenible. Welcome back, distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen. This is the world's first multilingual youth talk show, Hey the World. And thank you from our Mexico friends to come here and to give us an amazing presentation on climate change. You just share with us the role that advanced science and technology play improving the climate. In the magical science environmental protection youth project, we saw young people use their wisdom to make people in remote area aware of the pressing climate issue. Today, we have many friends from other countries. We really wanted to talk more about the climate change and how to protect our environment. Thank you so much for coming with us. Yes, of course, France has invested heavily in renewable energies, so it's such as wind or solar or hydro energy. Um, basically, they have also implemented a law about carbon pricing, so we don't use too many carbon energies, and uh, it will facilitate the transition to a low carbon energy system. Basically, in France now, we have a lot of gas oil cars, and we wish to switch to electric cars like China did already in the future. I hope it's possible. Then, well, the goal is 
to reduce the emission and developing cleaner industries. Thank you. And as we know, in the Belt and the Road Initiative, and encourage the innovative countries to abide by the principle of resource conservation and the environmental friendliness, and joint build a green development road. Our friend Gao Yuan is from the country of the Belt and Road Initiative. So could you like to share something with us? Thank you for the opportunity given me. Although Africa only contributes 2 to 3% to the global carbon emission, we are, however, working tirelessly with our global partners to tackle the issue of global warming and climate change. We have channeled our energies into various interventions, such as uh, the project action inform and validate climate action trajectory that maximize environmental and economic benefits in the long run. So such interventions include the EU UNEP African Low Emission Project that is ongoing in several African countries, including my country, Ghana. We also implemented the nationally determined contributions and DCs in waste sector. These projects are ongoing in countries like Ghana, La Côte d'Ivoire, and Senegal because we know that waste is a critical source to uh, the emission, and that we are much concerned about it and tackling it in these ways. The next thing is the uh, youth skill retooling to tackle uh, global warming or to see global actions as an opportunity to impact positively on society. So we are educating the youth on how to use waste or channel waste recover waste into wealth. By that, what do I mean? I mean that we can use the waste, we can recycle waste, and then we get something out of it. By getting something out of it, we are also protecting our own environment, where we live. We are also shifting from uh, the fuel vehicles to electric vehicles, because we know that fuel vehicles cause so much pollution to our environment. So we are doing the, all these projects or all these interventions in connection to reducing global warming as a nation and as a continent. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Gaoyan. That is really important. Thanks for sharing with us. As we know, the Africa carbon emissions are very low compared to other regions of the world. Ever so, the African countries are still making efforts to reduce their emissions. And we also have our EU's representative from Nigeria, Li Ye. So may I ask you what action you have taken in your country? Thank you very much for that beautiful question. Um, Nigeria, the government has responded to the adverse impact of climate change in various ways. We have so many layers to it. We start from the international level. Nigeria has uh, become a member party to the United Nations Framework um, Convention on Climate Change and it also is signatory to the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. Furthermore, Nigeria has subscribed to other key international agreements such as the Sandal Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and then also the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal for Accelerated National Development. Also, energizing education. There are so many programs that have been initiated by the government whereby youth are being educated on climate change. There are so many climate change issues happening around the northern part of Nigeria. There are plans to increase plant and tree planting so that it will reduce desert encroachment and so many other activities done by the government and also civil societies and NGOs are not left out. They have contributed immensely to trying to avoid the effect of climate change and also save the society at large. And I know that the effort done by government and that of the private sector and also individuals would help, you know, better the contributions of Nigeria towards the climate change um, that is globally, um, you know, driven by every other member of the community. And I believe with all these contributions, Nigeria would take its place and then also make sure that it contributes its own quota globally. Thank you. Wow, thank you.
So Adam, you're from Singapore, so your city is very well known by its nice environment. So you, uh, you must know something about the climate change or actions in our, your country, right? So first of all, I, I must say um, it's really commendable that all these countries are doing so many things uh, to protect the environment. And as somebody who is from an uh, an island nation, I'm actually very, very envious because you know we don't have as much land to do so many things. And the difference is, is that we also don't have any renewable energy sources. I think it's a very interesting case study as to how climate protection, environmental protection can happen on this kind of scale as compared to countries that are a lot bigger, like China. So the government actually has a huge emphasis on uh, environmental protection. The first one is the greening of the country. So Singapore, we are also nicknamed the Garden City. Actually, one third of the country is covered in trees. You know, and for such a small country where land is extremely scarce, this is actually quite phenomenal. Um, I believe in the next 10 years, uh, we hope to increase this by another 50% to add another more 200 hectares of space. You know, compared to the numbers that were described by the other countries, this is extremely small. But for our country, this is an enormous amount because land is really that scarce. The second point would then be what we call the energy reset. We already have 95% of our uh, energy coming from natural gas, which is the least damaging fossil fuel. But beyond that, we're also looking at several types of uh, renewable energy sources that we can tap onto. Well, the only thing that we, can, we really can do is solar energy. And we hope to quadruple that amount, uh, the deployment of that kind of energy by uh, 2025. Beyond the type of uh, uh, fuels that we consume on a national scale, there are certain restrictions that are, pla uh, there are, certain restrictions that are put in place uh, that affect every individual. So what are these things? Let's say our buildings. Increasingly, we are coming up with stricter guidelines when it comes to building construction, such that uh, buildings are designed to be more energy efficient. We talk about uh, public transport. We are investing a lot in public transport infrastructure to decrease the, uh, the demand and usage of cars. Singapore is also one of the only countries in the world that has a complete control on, uh, on vehicle growth. So our vehicle growth the population of vehicles in Singapore is actually zero. And we do that with um, very ex expensive taxes <laughs> to make sure that it's very difficult to buy a car. In addition, uh, by 2030, all cars that are registered in Singapore need to be of uh, energy efficient model. So there are all these things that happen from a top-down perspective as to how we can ensure that energy uh, usage in Singapore. Actually, the Singapore government has put in a lot of uh, um, education from a young age when it comes to climate change. So everybody knows about global warming, everybody learns about climate change, everybody learns about uh, the type of habits that you can integrate into your personal lives in order to protect the environment. Primero, para, para mí es un gran honor estar compartiendo este espacio con líderes en cambio climático que les interesan todos estos temas. Al escuchar cada una de sus opiniones me doy cuenta que podemos llegar a la conclusión que es necesario por un lado la acción, eh, por otro lado la colaboración, uno de los objetivos del desarrollo sostenible es la parte de crear alianzas, entonces considero que al hacer equipo y el poder este, reunir ideas podemos transformar realmente ese cambio en el mundo que queremos ver, eh, no solo en la sociedad sino en cada uno de los países en donde nosotros vivimos. So even though we are from different countries, we have the same goal. We want to make the earth better and greener. As the old Chinese saying goes, like, unless you pile up little steps, you can never journal a thousand miles. The stress of youth can be the great power that remains constant uh, in the fight against uh, climate change. So thank you so much, everyone, coming here. We promise we will take actions to achieve sustainable development goals to protect our environment. Thank you so much for coming with us. And uh, this is Hate World, and see you next time. My passion for science and my desire to share it with the world 
son las principales fuerzas impulsoras detrás de este proyecto. Con la esperanza de inspirar el entusiasmo y la acción de la gente para la protección del medio ambiente a través de actividades de promoción de la ciencia. I hope that through promoting science, we can stimulate people's passion for the environmental protection and motivate them to do it. Cada día siento una sensación de logro cuando veo cómo estamos inspirando a más personas a apreciar la ciencia y el medio ambiente. 每天，当我们看到我们如何激励更多的人欣赏科学、珍惜环境时，我都会收获成就感。La protección del medio ambiente se ha convertido en nuestra responsabilidad y misión común. La protección del environnement est devenue notre responsabilité et notre mission commune.